Okay, so uh, yes, uh, today uh, here uh, uh, our guest of uh, World Forum of Young Scientists webinar is Dr. Mohammad Naveed. And uh, Dr. Mohammad Naveed has obtained his PhD degree in biotechnology from uh, Kaidiyazam University, Islamabad, with, uh, with distinction. And he has uh, uh, he has won. Um, um, PhD indigenous and uh, scholarships from HEC and he is doing research projects in bioinformatics and molecular biotechnology. He has supervised 45 MSCs, 40 MPhil and one PhD students and uh, along with that he has published 70 research papers with 221 impact factor and 600 citations, one book and three book chapters. Also, he has been awarded Distinguished Researcher of the Year in 2016, in 2018, and in 2019. He has also delivered lectures as motivational speaker on education, character building, and humanity, and running a, currently uh, running a YouTube channel under the name Dr. Mohammad Naveed on Bioinformatics and Molecular Biology lecture. So today he is presenting uh, the topic which is in silico drug designing a novel approach to combat COVID-19 pandemic. So let's welcome our guest Dr. Mohammad Naveed. Yes, Dr. Mohammad Naveed, you can carry on. Okay, thank you, Ms. Nadia. <coughs> can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Okay. Uh, okay. As Ms. Ms. Nadia already shared with you about the today topic, that's about the drug designing against COVID-19. First of all, I am very thankful to World Forum for Young Scientists for inviting me this very valuable and uh, we can say that uh, very uh, important topic right now in current scenario of COVID-19. Because most of you are very familiar with the, uh, we can say that with vaccine design, uh, with uh, other medicines, but very rare and very few uh, of you are aware with drug design. So first of all, we have to differentiate among the, these terms, what is the drug design, what is the vaccine design, and uh, what, what is the medicine. So <clears throat> uh, any chemical that produces a change in our body, we can call it as a uh, drug. So it means to say that uh, chemical uh, entity that come from, uh, we can say that uh, 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 we can extract any chemical from plants, we can make a uh, artificial chemical, we can make a mixture of different chemical, uh, and then we can uh, uh, check its efficacy as a drug. So uh, first of all, we have to need a chemical. And then second thing is that uh, if this chemical make change in our body, so the word change is very important because we are not focusing on uh, to change all our whole body. We are, uh, we are going to target a specific uh, disease, a specific treatment, a specific uh, remedy. So this changes belong to that part of our body. Or in this way, we can say that the most important and the most wonderful uh, journey of science is belong to the uh, bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is one of the disciplines which can uh, give an access to make these changes a target specific one. So how we can make a specific target therapy or target design, we will discuss in our later on uh, discussion. So uh, next thing is that that drug which we have to use uh, must have to go for the diagnosis or treatment of disease and they are selective in their action. That is the most important thing for any kind of the researcher. If you are the researcher of BS level or you can, we can say that at MS level or you are going to uh, going to research in your PAD or postdoc level, you must have to focus this second thing, selective in their action. So we can, how we can mirror the, this selection, how we can mirror this action, how we can mirror this change, that is based on the computer-added drug design. 
if you are uh, working in in your lab as an in vitro scientist or an in vivo scientist you must have to focus the first the most important the prime thing is that that is the selection of your uh, selection of your drug selection of your uh, drug candidate and then action of that kind and to be a uh, action of that uh, drug must be a specific drug discovery in earlier days was made by random screening of higher plant we are very familiar that uh, in uh, if we can go uh, in past when we have no our genome sequence we need to say that when we have no discovery of pcr in 1985 then uh, after that uh, the journey from 1987 to 2003 the human genome projects if you can go more beyond that so uh, uh, before that we are going uh, uh, we, we did the treatment of different kind of the diseases by different therapies by different plant extracts like we uh, sometimes if we have pain over uh, in stomach we can uh, we can drink a, a glass of milk if we can have uh, something else in our uh, body we use different uh, mixture of uh, plant extracts so that is the old way where we can say that the, we use the crowd plant as a drug that's uh, that's uh, that's not bad if we can say that that's a not bad the traditional indian therapies traditional pakistani therapies ethnobotany that's all about the uh, drug discoveries but that's not a specific one so it mean to say that we uh, we use these things for the treatment of uh, uh, every kind of our disease in our body but that is based on, based on our experiences so you must have to learn in this talk where that experience come from the computer aided drug designs where we become a specific uh, where to make our target and specific where to treat the, that target disease not all over whole body how we can check the side effects of these things how we can assure that this uh, mixture this plant mixture or we can say that this uh, uh, fruit uh, this vegetable is more important for our body in a specific way that is the main thing for today talk uh, we are not focusing on a blind thing that we use the following mixture of the plants following mixture of the drugs following mixture of the fruit for following mixture of the uh, vegetables that can treat uh, our uh, different diseases of our body so we have to pick uh, one candidate from these things that is our sources that that is the main uh, we can say that main sources behind any kind of the drug another thing is that what is the effect of that thing on, uh, on uh, in a specific it specific way to the disease in our body so that is the main uh, objective of today talk you have to focus on one thing how we can pick a candidate for a drug and then how make it a specific to that drug and how we can treatment uh that drug to uh, what the diagnosis that we use an example of a covid 19 uh, we, we can get that sars cov 2 virus okay if we can discuss about the process of this uh, drug design that's a not an easy way so it's a very lengthy process if you can go for uh, design a drug we may take a one or two or three years it's depend upon our results because we have to check out the drug development process drug development pathways then discoveries then preclinical development then clinical developments because we are focusing to treat the human disease so when we are focusing the human disease so there is a very 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 chance of a risk so we have to avoid these risks by preclinical developments and by clinical developments so preclinical and clinical it take about one uh, one to two uh, years to make an drug effectful for our body because we have to go for the animal trials then we can go for the human trials we not directly go for the human trial but in past when we have no specific genome no specific protein no specific uh, we can say that uh, virus genome then we use a direct human trial so that is ethically is the bad in all over the words because we are right now in the era of genomics in the era of proteomics in the era of uh, Uh, bioinformatics and artificial intelligence as well as right now so we must have to go for a, a specific way uh, if this uh, uh, can affect uh, animal or not in at in vitro level or in vivo level then we can go for the human trial so in in drug design process we must have to focus uh, our target that is a human okay if we can discuss about the steps in drug discovery and developments these are the key points for my presentation today and not for my presentation all of my article which are published for the drug designing for the as well as some of them was also for the vaccine designs so you have to uh, focus on these points first of all uh, we have to go for the target identification 
So uh, most sorry artists to inter- must have to draw, uh, uh, write down for your uh, knowledge. This method is for all kind of the drug design processes. We have many drug drug design uh, systems, drug design processes uh, at in silico level as well. We will discuss in later on. So this slide is representing here the complete process. Mean to say that. First of all, we have a, tra- a target identification. So here we are not focusing the target, mean to say that a human or animal, that is the prior target. So here we have a target, a receptor or a protein in our body, uh, which can uh, interact with that drug, which we can say that in second step, hit identification. If our ligand can uh, interact with our target, in third way, let uh, we would use the word lead optimization. So here lead mean to say that ligand. So our receptor and ligands must be optimized before going to declare that this is a drug candidate. So if we can optimize our lead with our target, then we can go for the fourth step, that is a preclinical trials. So that trials based on different kind of uh, the, uh, we can say that model organism like mice, like rabbits, like monkey. And then we have a clinical trial of human. But after that, there's a very, very important process. We can say that that's a drug approval from different agencies, different authorities, different ministries of uh, your country. That is the main thing, drug approval. So before going to drug approval, because it's not our part of the today discussion, uh, we have to discuss about these five things. Target, then target adjustment with the, our, uh, our uh, we can say that ligand, then late optimization, then preclinical trial, then clinical trial. Okay, here we have a different method for COVID-19 drug design, uh, which can come under the umbrella of computer added drug design. So these are things which is based on, we can say that by informatics. If you are the student of biotechnology, you are the student of biochemistry, or you are, you are the student of, bio, uh, we can say computational biology or biology. So you can easily opt uh, these methods for, uh, for the designing of a drug. So first one is that structure-based drug design. Second is a ligand-based drug design, then de novo drug design, then library-based drug design. So under the umbrella of computer-added drug design, we will discuss with an example of COVID-19-14 and with their target as a drug uh, candidate. We will perform all of these steps in, uh, later on, but you have to familiar these things. We can make a drug on the base of a, a structure. Structure of what we can say that structure. Structure of our target. Target means to say that our protein. Protein means to say that our receptor. So it means to say that we can make up drug, we can make our designer drug on the base of our receptor structure. Receptor means to say that protein. Like we can say that if we can uh, discuss with the COVID-19, so we have a different kind of receptor of these COVID-19, AC2 receptor, very famous one. We will discuss that one in our today lecture. Then ligand-based drug design. We have only known about the ligand. If you have a very familiar with the, uh, with any com- chemical, any compound, any uh, we can say the phytochemical, which is a very familiar for a specific uh, interaction with the, our body receptors. So we can design our, our drug only truly based of this ligand. Then very famous one, the computer drug design, the novel drug design, a novel compound. We can use uh, any compound, any hit, which is not be, uh, used before in, uh, we can say that by plants, well, not before used by fruits, but not used by anything else. We use a first time, the novel. Uh, anything which is the combination of two, uh, we can say that uh, to ligand combination of uh, uh, two chemical, we, we will use that one for the drug design. Then library based drug design mean to say that we have a lot of things uh, in our library. So from this library, we can check our target and then our ligand uh, uh, target and ligand interaction tell us that which target is, uh, which ligand is the best one from this library, which can be used for the drug design. This is a very old, old way we can say that on the base of library based. So we will we'll focus on first three one, Structure-based, ligand-based, and de novo. So here we have a step on the computer-added drug design, which is we already discussed, but here we in detail, in little depth, what is the target identification in our second step, protein sequence identification. Target mean to say that any protein, which might be a receptor, which might be an enzyme in our body, uh, which act uh, as a, our target for drug. So first, we, first of all, we, uh, you have to uh, fetch out the sequence of that protein. 
how we can fetch out the sequences of, of that protein we will discuss on uh, in our uh, sample of covid 19 we can use different databases uh, database might be we can use for ncbi we can use edb we can we use spsi we can uniprot we can use uniprot so there's a many way uh, from where we can extract or fetch out our protein uh, sequence uh, then we can use uh, uh, different kind of the similarity uh, matrices by the different databases. Like we can use the protein blast uh, from where we can check its complementary sequences. We can say that homology based sequences. Then we can go for structure determination. Uh, if you have a protein sequence, you are very familiar. If you are the student of biology, you know, in in protein, if we we, we are discussing uh, discussing about the protein, so protein have four different structures. First one is a primary one we, we can which we call it at uh, primary sequence or primary structure. Then we have a secondary structure. Then we have a tertiary. Then we have quaternary structure. So uh, for claiming your basic concepts at primary level, we have a protein sequence in the form of a simple amino acid in a linear way. So these amino acids, uh, uh, we will uh, from where we can get these amino acids from different databases, and then you can also if you have uh, any gene which uh, whose port, uh, which code a protein, and that protein is your target. So you might use that gene sequence to translate uh, into a protein, and from these from that protein, the longest operating frame you can use as a protein primary sequence by by the use of expressi. So these protein sequence that uh, the, you have to identify uh, with the longest operating frame, and then you have to go for the further characterization that is secondary and tertiary structure. So you are uh, also might be familiar with the, with that. From all of these four structures, the most important one is the protein tertiary structure, which we call it as a protein 3D structure. So this structure is used mostly for the protein uh, structure determination, or we can say that the standard structure for the bioinformatic analysis, or we can say that the for drug design or vaccine design. So protein 3D structure, further we have from primary sequence to we move towards the protein uh, tertiary structure for use eye taser, we use uh, Swiss modeling, we use any kind of the modeling tool from where we can get our uh, protein uh, tertiary structure on the base of uh, available templates from Uniprot from anything else. So then we have a protein intrinsic disorders, protein physiochemical properties, mean to say that okay, our target physiochemical properties, we have to search out that. There's also many tools used for the protein physiochemical uh, properties. In our drug design process, we can also use at the level of admit. Now searching and screening of ligand. If you, in, for, in the, four, the first four steps of computer added drug design, that is truly based on your ligand, truly based on your structure, truly based on your de novo molecules. But at fifth level, you have to go for your ligand, your drug candidate. So for, uh, you have to search and screen your ligand, screen on the base of this target. So every student must be familiar uh, with that point. Uh, whenever and wherever you have to hear about different videos, different lectures about drug designing, and uh, most of the students confused. In first step is that we are going for the ligand selection. But when we read and when we uh, read some article or when we hear uh, uh, different kind of the YouTube uh, lectures and where they are discussing about the target and the student confused why we are we are going to select our ligand why we are discussing target because on the base of that target you have to select your ligand. If your ligand have interaction, have ligand have uh, interactive properties uh, with your target, then we can go. We can say that uh, your uh, drug candidate is a good one. So that's why uh, the ligand step is at number five. But when you, we can go for discussing in detail or in depth of drug designing, where you can see the uh, ligand come at the first stage. Okay, then drug candidate selection. Okay, when your uh, if your ligand and your target is uh, 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 can interact with each other, uh, then we can say that our drug candidate is selected. Or after that, we can go for the clinical trial and formulation and then approval of that drug. So let, this is a little bit depth computer added drug design process. Okay, uh, de novo drug design. Here we have uh, different three type of a drug that's uh, based on 3D structure of receptors used to design a novel molecule step involved, determination of lead target complex, design of lead modification. Mean to say that here we have de novo, mean to say that we have a receptor in the form of a 3D structure. Mean to say that protein. We have a protein receptor in the form of a 3D structure. So if I have a protein, so protein have active sites. 
So if have a protein, uh, if a protein have active sites, for on that active site, there's a some uh, we can say that ligand can interact, and these ligand we can call these as a lead. So determination of lead target complex. So here we can uh, we can focus on the docking analysis of, of our drug uh, is interacted with the uh, we can say that our target our protein receptors. Then we can design of lead or modification if you, we need some kind of the modification we can do at this stage as well. So this is very simple and brief way how we can um, uh, make a, a new drug de novo new drug from a beginning uh, on the base of a 3D structure. Next, we have a ligand-based drug design. Ligand is known here. We already discussed about that. No clue about the target protein. We are blank on in this way. We have only a ligand, and that if this ligand interact with many proteins, so we have to uh, uh, found we have to select our target in uh, on, on this step. We can we can say that on this uh, uh, drug design process in drug test drug design category, we have to select our target here. Ligand is already known. If you know about that, this ligand, this chemical, this molecule, this thing is used for that, uh, for the treatment of that, uh, we can say that disease. So our ligand is already known. So here we have to focus uh, our ligand, where our ligand can interact in our body. So how we can do this one, we will discuss by, uh, we can we can use here two very important method of uh, drug designing for, for microphone like molding and QSR analysis. And the quantitative structure activity relationship of your drug. So we already uh, we will discuss in our later on in last stage of drug designing these two steps. Then we have a library based already. We have, if we have a protein target, then we already used uh, available any kind of the drug is available in our library. That drug uh, if interacted with that protein, so we can make a new drug. So it means to say that already if we have in our database some kind of the molecule, some kind kind of the we can say that uh, fragment of uh, different chemicals. So uh, if they are interacting with the, our target protein, so we can use that one also. Here we no need to go for the known uh, ligand as well as as well as the novo novel uh, 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 ligand uh, molecule. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, uh, right, uh, right till right now, uh, we already discussed about the basic things. Uh, uh, what is the what is a drug, and uh, how we can uh, make a drug candidate, and then what are the step, uh, different steps of uh, drug designing. Uh, uh, then we have uh, different process of drug designing, then types of drug designing, and then the last we have discussed about the computer added drug design process. But right now, to, uh, we will move to our. Uh, Today lecture that's a based on COVID-19 with an example potential drug candidate. First of all, we have to discuss the potential drug candidate, which is uh, published right now in different uh, literature, in different articles. Uh, we'll see that one. Then we will can uh, pick uh, one of them for the designing of a drug. So here are the name of different drugs which are discovered, uh, which are not discovered. We can say discovered, which are under trial right now. And uh, some of them are in, at level of pre-registration, like Remdivars from United States. Here we can see uh, each and everything of company name. Then you can check the trial phase. Then to check the country name, country. Then you can check the expected cost for per doses in dollar. So these are different kind of the drug which is reported uh, right now on uh, uh, different pages of COVID-19, like from NIH. Uh, we can easily get out from uh, WH, uh, WHO, we can easily get the data from uh, these different kind of the drugs which is reported so far. If you are working on, on any one of them, so you can, uh, uh, from this slide, you can check the uh, current level of working of these drugs. Here also a list of uh, other drugs, some other that like to sell is Zabab, which is from, uh, we can say that uh, Chungai Pharmaceutical Company, phase three from Japan, and then uh, you can see the cost of uh, per doses is $250. So these are the different name, or we can say that different uh, phases of uh, already uh, established companies who are working on different kind of the drugs, uh, and then give the name of their ligand as a drug name. Here right now you can see each and every name. Okay, here the process of drug design, which is our today topic. Uh, how we can design a drug against COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. So here we have a four step. So you must have to write down these all things. We will discuss one by one each and every step. Uh, how we can use computer added drug designing approach by using three methods, structure, lichen, de novo. And how we can design uh, uh, a drug by the use of different tools or softwares, our databases, 
uh, some of them, uh, some of the tool are freely available. Some of them uh, are unpaid. But here I have only discussed, only only shared you with the uh, those tool which is freely available from uh, any we can say that uh, database from any search engine from any we can say that uh, university database. Uh, so you can easily extract your uh, these information from these databases from these uh, we can say that uh, tools. So first step is that in uh, any kind of the drug design is a ligand selection. I already told you that uh, before uh, we will discuss about the target selection. So, so this ligand selection is based on a target. This ligand selection is based on a target. So how we can uh, select our ligand? There's a two main steps, database mining, then structural similarity. Here we use mining. Mining means to say that dig out. You have to search out. Are different databases and from these different databases you have to select your ligand and then you have to check the structure similarity of your ligand with other we can say that available molecular chemicals uh, uh, everything so here you have uh, for example database uh, screening for potential phytochemical you use uh, these two different uh, tools uh, impact or maps and for structure similarity you can go for the qsr analysis or chem mine uh, for the first step I uh, here uh, uh, I have uh, I will discuss in detail and in depth ligand selection and their tools. So the most in my lectures in uh, my article which I, I have published in different drugs for COVID-19, I use the ELEA 3D tool, online tool, ELEA 3D. Or if you want to in detail or in depth lecture on this tool for the ligand selection, so my YouTube lecture number 33 is based on uh, uh, this one, uh, how we can select a ligand selection and where you can go and uh, uh, I have uh, done with the hands-on training, how we can uh, select from first step to last step a ligand uh, on the base of different, uh, we can say that uh, receptors are uh, targets. Then oh, if you can go for the offline tools, you, these are downloaded, uh, you can go for breed or loading, very famous one. If you can go, uh, we can uh, design, uh, we can search our ligand from different databases as well. like. We, you can go for vampire, we, you can go for Swiss bio uh, uh, studs, or from different databases. You can also search your ligand from different databases. So your drug might be from drug bank, PubChem, Chamble, uh, Chem Spider. You can uh, if, mean to say that if you are searching a molecule or a, uh, sorry, if you are searching a, uh, we can say that a phytochemical or a chemical, so you, you can uh, search out from these different ways by the use of different tools, which we further uh, have an interface with different databases like ELE, ELEA 3D, or you can go for different databases like Drug Bank, PubChem, Chamble, Camp Spider. You can easily uh, dig out your chemical from, the, uh, from these, uh, we can say, databases. But if you are going for de novo search, uh, you are going to make a, uh, are designing a new uh, chemical. So you can also design by uh, your chemical by the use of ELEA 3D. But at the first step is that you have to identify your ligand. Then second step is that you go for the similarity search. Similar, we can go. Uh, we can check our similarity search by Swiss similarity. So it's a very basic tool on uh, Swiss portal where you can uh, easily put your uh, uh, your uh, we can say that ligand, uh, your chemical, your compound, uh, or your phytochemical, and it gives you a, a lot of uh, uh, other chemicals which is present inside of our body. And it gives you a structure as uh, as well as physical and chemical relationship with those chemicals. So it's the easy way in, at first step, we can easily characterize our uh, ligand uh, by the use of this uh, similarity search tool. So this is all about the first step, that's a ligand selection. But the most important thing which you have to must be remembered that uh, your ligand must be selected on the base of your target. So here we have a second step, that's a target prediction that uh, will facilitate the pathway analysis that we can say that use Swiss target prediction tool uh, from where our ligand can uh, interact with our target target. We, uh, we are discussing target uh, here about the protein or receptors. So here uh, our second step, my YouTube lecture is uh, 34 is uh, based on uh, uh, this target prediction. So how you can pick, uh, pick your target on the base of your drug? There's online and offline tools. But I always recommend you have to use only a Swiss target prediction tool. 
there's a many other offline mall score pass score online as a target hunters but swiss target prediction is freely available so you can easily put your sequence upload your uh, upload the structure of your drug drug mean to say that your chemical or phytochemical uh, you have to upload the structure of uh, that one which you have already search out which you have you already identified in your uh, in our previous step you have to upload that one on swiss target prediction tool where it give you uh, in search it, it give you uh, the most suitable targets for your uh, uh, for your we can say that drug so if you you are using uh, we can say that uh, a phytochemical and that phytochemical might be interact with the covid 19 ace2 receptors so if in your target list you have to uh, you, you find you found that uh, uh, there is a ace2 receptor so it means to say that your drug can easily interact with that receptor so on the base of different kind of the scores we can uh, analyze that which target is the best one which target is not the best one so what is that score that score is based on the drug and target interaction and that score might uh, that score in percentage so if we have a score more than 90% uh, of our drug and our receptor we mean to so that target so we can easily pick that uh, uh, that target uh, or that target might be present in our body as well so next thing is that pathway analysis which is we can go for the proteome or cag pathway analysis so you are uh, already used uh, and most of time recommended that cag pathway is the most important one from where you can easily guess out that if your drug is uh, interacting with your target means so that a chemical is interacting with a protein a ligand or a lead is interacting toward your uh, interacting with your protein so here we can we are going towards the lead optimization so if in our body uh at what stage at what level we can say that it is uh, it show interaction so we can get that interaction from a cag pathway analysis after that if you have got your uh, analysis uh, if, if if you got your target so first you have uh, to check out your uh, ligand from first step and at second step from this interaction from this uh, score we can get our target so if we have our target in the form of a protein we can go for the structure analysis of that protein which is, we have already discussed before that homology analysis we use the modeler we can use the itaser as swiss model so if you are using the, everything for swiss so it's very good for you because most of the time if we use itaser then we can if we can pick that structure on swiss that make some kind of the hindrance as well so i always recommend you you have to use this swiss uh, tools like swiss target prediction tool and then swiss modeling as well so from here we get the homology modeling homology modeling mean to say that we can get the 3d structure of our target our protein our receptor after that we can go for the target binding site analysis so by pop truck or i use 3d ligand site so 3d i always recommend that why 3d ligand site it tell us that uh, on which site of the active site of our protein interacting with the ligand or in another way we can say that vice versa on what uh, uh, amino acid sequences are we can find out the amino acid sequences where uh, in at active site of our target where our drug is interacting so here we can we can say that uh, we can fetch out the main uh, uh, site for interaction of our, our target with our ligand because in our third step we can go for the interaction analysis before going to the interaction analysis you have to fetch out that uh, on which site of your active site of target your ligand is uh, binding so here you can already i told you that you can easily guess out the lecture number 34 on my youtube channel and bioinformatics domain okay third one that's a ligand target interaction if we know uh, before that if we can uh, already uh, get out the structure uh, get out the uh, we can say that we already predicted the ligand uh, then we can easily easily fetch out the target on the base of our ligand then how we can get their interactions by the drug designing so here you must have to know about the three steps number 1 molecular docking number 2 virtual screening number 3 is a molecular dynamics means so that simulations so these three things tell us that uh, the complete story complete energy optimization energy minimization and then uh, if we can go for the uh, simulation level deformability of uh, and eigen values of our target and ligand interaction 
so if and when and where you want to select your ligand uh, you want to select your target you want to design a drug you want to check their interaction so you must have to go you must have to pass on these three stages how you can go this one here in detail or in depth uh, i will share different tools different steps first of all virtual screening uh, virtual screening mean to say that you can uh, uh, you can check the interaction by laboratory screening or manual screening always and every every time i have recommended that you have to use the manual screening of your uh, the ligand and target interaction like atodacvina head dog galaxy dog and swiss dog so here i'll i uh, always say the, in my different lecture uh, you have to use the atodoc vena or you can go for the swiss dog so swiss dog because it's a ligand protein interaction ligand receptor interaction so swiss dog is uh, very suitable for this one so here we can get the different energies in the form of delta g mean to say that the affinity of our ligand interaction with our target so we can get the energies Uh, from uh, these tools which tell us that if we have a lowest energy uh, as compared to the reported one so we can say that our ligand and our target uh, interaction is more suitable as compared to the uh, previous reported all kind of the drugs for that target so you can also compare your different kind of the ligand by with uh, your target if you have uh, previously if you have a score of 92 91 92 93 93 that score are very near to each other so at that level these energies tell you that uh, which uh, ligand is the best one for your target so we can go for docking analysis interaction analysis and this interaction analysis give us the score in the form of a Uh, we can say that energies uh, and the most energy if we have a energy in kilocalorie per mole for if we can go for discuss uh, discussing the atodoc vena score if we want to go discussing the swiss dog score so we have energy in minus if you have a maximum minus uh, score that means say that the affinity the uh, binding affinity the energy minimization uh, between these two molecules are the best one after that if you done if you if you have checked if you have verified your ligand and target uh, which you have predicted at step number 2 and the step number 1 and you have to verify it by the docking then you have to go for the molecular dynamics simulation but most of the time most the researcher or the students are very keen to go for the molecular dynamics simulation no molecular dynamics simulation mean to say that first of all we have to establish a ligand and target interaction we must have to verify it and very dict uh, validate uh, our interaction if uh, we can say that at step number 3 our ligand is changed uh, at step number 2 ligand uh, is something else at step number 1 target something else so how we can go for the molecular dynamics simulation so it mean to say that you have to complete your story by making by making a verdict that this is your ligand this is your target and this is the ligand target interaction score and that score is the best must be the best one if you can go for the molecular dynamic simulation so what the molecular dynamic simulation and how we can use uh, this one if you can go for the online tool imo swiss uh, this swiss pram and if can, you can go for the offline tool gromax and chaam it's very famous tools so uh, most of the students asking me uh, we have not access our for super computer then how we can perform the gromax and then uh, also we are user of window 90 uh, uh, we can say that window 10 blah 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 and how we can use this one uh, i already shared with you that uh, if you uh, uh, go uh, and search the different designing of different vaccine for covid 19 so there are most of the article i have uh, searched out that that's on the base of i mode and gromax so here also i recommend you you can go for the i mode and gromax i mode means that if you are if your research if your data is uh, so authentic your, your data is uh, that is uh, so powerful so we can easily go for the i mode but if you have only focusing on the simulation or docking study then you have to go for the gromax mostly it's a paid one 
uh, uh, different kind of the universities and different kind of the uh, student as well. If they have a supercomputer, they are using the Gromax and they can, uh, if we can discuss in price in Pakistani rupees, they're 20, 20,000 rupees, they can easily give you the result of Gromax or analysis of Gromax. But I will recommend you right now, if you have no access of uh, money in the form of different project, blah, blah, then you can go for the iNode as well. Okay, after that, if you can check the uh, uh, authenticity of your docking interruption, energy minimizations, uh, deformability of your protein, eigenvalues, these all things come under the heading of molecular dynamic simulation. Then you have to go for the QSR analysis. So QR analysis, we can use the CAMSAR or CAMDB. Offline tools, we use the CQSR or Open3D QSR. So I recommend you CAMSAR here or Open3D QSR. These are the two tools where you can check the quantitative structure activity relationship. I mean to say that at the last level, we are going step by step, we are going from, or we can say that zoom out to zoom in. At zoom out, we have a ligand from any source. We have a protein target from any source. Then we have checked this interaction of this ligand and protein by the docking. If we confirm that docking, then we can move toward the biodynamics simulation, energy minimization of that interaction by different like I mode and Romex, then we can go for the quantitative structure activity relationship of uh, our proteins. Means so that we have to characterize at body level, we have to characterize uh, at organ level by the QSR analysis. So my lecture number 33 at YouTube is available for you. If you can go at, uh, if you want to design a drug with each and every step, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, see this lecture at uh, my YouTube channel. Okay, the last step that is a preclinical testing uh, on the base of uh, uh, we can say that in silico study, not in we can say that in vitro study. For in vitro, we use the word clinical testing, clinical trials. So here we use the word preclinical testing before going to a lab, before going to we can say that on different kind of the target or model organisms, we have to check the preclinical testing uh, by the use of computer added drug design program. Here we can check the admit analysis. Here we can check the drug likeliness. Here we can check the Lippen Sky rule on the base of pharmacology of your drug. And here we can check the toxicity analysis as well. Or we can check this one. So here we have an admit analysis. So you have to use the Swiss ADME and then QSR toolbox as well. So preclinical testing means to say that after docking, after we can say that uh, uh, simulation, uh, the, the most important thing is that you have to go for these two kinds of analysis. Number one, admit analysis. Number two, QSR analysis. These two analysis uh, tell us about the, uh, we can say that uh, uh, interaction or we can say that uh, our drug candidate uh, uh, validation, our drug candidate application in our body, in our system, uh, we can easily check by these two things, admit and QSR analysis, as well as tell about the compounds, uh, uh, com uh, compounds nature and compound side effects as well. So next thing is that Lippen Sky rule of five. If, you, if our drug candidate is uh, past the Swiss ADME, uh, two results as and then QSR results, then we can go for the Lippen Sky rule of five. Lippen Sky rule is a sub part, we can say sub part of Swiss ADME. If you can go for the Swiss ADME, Swiss ADME give a result of the Lippen Sky rule as well. So it, if this result is not does not proceed, exceed five, we can say that an octanal water partition coefficient log P that does not exceed five. So here we have an, a result in our result in numbers. So no more than five hydrogen bond donors no more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors, a molecular mass less than 500 Daltons, and, and the water partition coefficient should not exceed the five. These are the four different values of Lippert Sky Rule. What is Lippert Sky Rule? Why we are discussing uh, this, uh, this, uh, this rule, or we can say that this method? Because in pharmacology, in pharmacy, uh, where we going for designing of different kind of the drugs, we must have to focus the uh, hydrogen donor and hydrogen acceptor elements of our ligand and interactions. So if this pass this rule, then we can say that this is this might be the candidate for at pharmacology level. This might be the candidate for the drug design. So this number is we, how we can extract this number by the use of Swiss ADME. Swiss ADME give this number by how we can uh, get that number. We 
upload the interaction of uh, our previous step that is a uh, we can say that simulation step uh, on ad, uh, swiss admin and on that page it give the uh, these numbers which number is uh, more than 5 which number is less than 10 which number does not exceed 5 if these uh, following rule is uh, our rule are applicable and these rule are uh, get the uh, get their score then we can say that Uh, the reaper sky rule is followed and last thing is that by the use of toxi m we can go for the toxicity analysis toxicity analysis mean to say that our drug or a ligand uh, which we use the ligand uh, as a lead uh, we can check the uh, its side effects so if it give a score in the form of again in the form of a different kind of the numbers and that number tell us tell us that from where and from which part of our body it can affect so this is the pre clinical testing before going to the clinical testing of our uh, drug uh, candidate uh, after that after fourth step this, this this is all about the computer aided drug design and this lecture is available at lecture number 36 on youtube uh, you can easily check out that uh, after that uh, what is the next step next step is that clinical testing so you have first you have to go for the synthesis of your drug then you have to go mean to say that what is the drug your ligand your lead you have to synthesize that lead and then you have to check that lead like remdesivir is a lead remdesivir is just like as we can say that uh, a ligand so if you have characterized your uh, ligand uh, right till you no know, at fourth step of computer aided drug design at the clinical level then i and any kind of the scientist can recommend you for the synthesis of your ligand synthesis of your drug and after the sense of your drug you can go for the animal trials which is called as the clinical testing so in that way first pre clinical testing uh, phase 2 phase 1 then phase 2 then phase 3 phase 3 mean to say that first you have to check on different kind of the model organisms different three different three trials and if you can get the most validated data in those two trials then we can say that uh, our drug is okay if it give a good result at one trial but not give the result in rest of the two trial we can go we cannot proceed with that drug and after if you can uh, check on uh, pre clinical testing on different kind of the model organisms then we can go for the clinical testing on human being and here we can also use three different trials of 6 6 month so it mean to say that 1.5 years or 1 and 1/2 years we have required for the clinical and pre clinical testing of uh, our candidate drug after that if it's uh, successfully uh, we can uh, say that successfully applicable on in on uh, pre clinical at a different kind of the model organism and then uh, at the post stage we can say that on human being uh, if we are we, go, we are discussing about uh, uh, the covid 19 uh, so that if uh, after two and half years if it's okay with all of our trials then we can recommend it as a, a registration level with the different agencies of all over the world like we can say that who and ih they can recommend our drug candidate and then we have to get the approval from our local bodies as well so after that we can say that our drugs is okay for a different kind of the things that's all about from my side uh, from today lecture that's about the computer aided drug design and here uh, my official page of uh, we can say that uh, uh, youtube channel you can easily subscribe this channel and uh, from lecture number 32 to lecture number 30x 36 that is the five lecture that is purely solely based on computer aided drug design not only the name of the tool but uh, we uh, i have already discussed there how you can uh, how you can use the ac2 receptor of uh, uh, covid 19 or sars cov 2 uh, for the designing of a, a drug and drug uh, against any kind any any from any source of a lead that that is we can say that your ligand so you can easily uh, go there and check uh, each and every step of our uh, performance way of our uh, drug designing so more, one more thing is that uh, before compiling and uh, before going towards the discussion session i will summarize all about uh, in at first step uh, we uh, have discussed about uh, what kind of the candidates of drugs are available right now and what are the processes of uh, drug designing and uh, how we can say that this uh, uh, this molecule or this compound or that compound is the candidate for drug designing and then how many different types of the drug designing uh, like we can say that structure 
architecture based, lagging based, or de novo, or library based, and then how we can use uh, different processes of computer aided web designs from start of the target optimization to lead optimization, and then target protein interaction, and then preclinical trials and clinical trials. And then uh, the uh, we can say that approval of from different uh, sources from different history body of our country as well as all over the world of health agencies all over the world. After that, uh, we use uh, 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 we can say that we use uh, uh, an example of uh, our. Uh, uh, our lectures which are present on YouTube's, how we can uh, see those lectures, there's a four different kind of the steps with different tools and different steps, different, uh, we can say that step-by-step -step hierarchy of, uh, uh, we can uh, say that drug designing, first of all, you have to go for the ligand identification on the base of your target, and we have used different kind of the tool there, like ELEA 3 d and then uh, for uh, in next step on second level, we have to go for the target selection on the base of our drug. And, and number three, and number three, we have to check the interaction of our ligand and our target. And number four, we have checked the preclinical testing of our drug candidate uh, with uh, interaction to that uh, target uh, on the base of admit, uh, admit analysis and QSR analysis. That's all about from today's lecture. Now we can move toward your question session. Gee, miss. Uh, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Navid, uh, I'm Dr. Uruj from Dow University of Health Sciences. Uh, I want to ask a question first. So, uh, if someone want to uh, design a nanoparticle for a drug delivery, uh, let's say uh, take some protein, some cross-linker, and add uh, uh, anti-cancer drug or to make a conjugate with it, and someone want to check that how it uh, work on cancer cells. Can we uh, do something uh, on docking level? Uh, for yes, it? yes, yes. Why not? Uh, <clears throat> most of these uh, students right now working uh, like in PAT or we can say that at MS level, they are most mostly working on the nanoparticles. Because we are nanoparticle, we facilitate in our in future level. We can say that it facilitate at uh, uh, the level of uh, drug delivery as well. So yes, you we can check it uh, at two level. First level is that you have to check your nanoparticle with that compound by different docking analysis. By we can say that by Rodok Vina, we can use uh, Swiss Dock as well. And later on, because if that nanoparticle and your uh, uh, ligand or lead candidate uh, is uh, related to the diagnosis or treatment of cancer, then you have to check it as QSR analysis and uh, admit analysis. Because admit analysis tell us the complete story and picture of uh, how, how this uh, interact with our, uh, uh, we can say that uh, our conjugate uh, in the form of uh, a nanoparticle or in, in the combination of a nanoparticle and uh, your lead. So you have to pass on admit analysis as well, not only a docking analysis. Docking analysis will tell us tell you only about uh, uh, the interaction of uh, your nanoparticle with your drug. Uh, it gives you a picture of uh, the interaction and we can say that com uh, compatibility of uh, these two compounds. But after the conjugate, if you have developed the conjugate, you have checked that conjugate for your target protein. Mean to, mean to say that your cancer receptor in your uh, in any kind of uh, human body which is present in our body that protein after that we have to follow the, these rules these these systems we have to go for the number three step that is the docking and simulation and number four step preclinical you have to go for the admit uh, uh, check and uh, you have to go for the uh, we can say that uh, uh, qsr analysis yes this is possible uh, thank you so much for your uh, answer, or great answer. <laughs> thank you, very informative. Uh, Ms. Nadia, you can carry on to ask a question from the attendees. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uruj. And most important, thank you, Dr. Muhammad Nani, for such a, a wonderful presentation. You explained very well. Most welcome. Uh, yes, and I, actually, I want to ask related to ligand. Um, uh, binding. So, do you target uh, your uh, compound with the the extracellular ligand, or it could be intracellular ligand, like the signaling pathways? You know, the G protein coupled receptors when you go downstream, and there are um, 
some uh, ligands also as well in the intracellular. So you target that, uh, and if you target that, how, how we can, uh, you know, focus and uh, 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 screen the, that ligand with that uh, target, with our target protein, which is intracellular. So that's a very good question, Ms. Uh, yes, uh, if we are, if we, are, if we were discussing about the, uh, we can say the intracellular or extracellular, before going to designing any kind of the drug, you must have to go for literature review. In literature mm -hmm. review, you can easily fetch out that uh, our ligand can interact at extracellular level or intracellular level. So mm -hmm. how we can check at in silico level? Uh, that is your question. So if, if we have a ligand and that we have a target, that might be some target is present on the extracellular level, might be some target is present at the intracellular level. So before going to uh, docking or interaction analysis, we have to go for the pathway analysis. That pathway okay. tell us that, that pathway tell us that our, uh, our required, we can say that our target protein is present on extracellular or present on intracellular level. So on the base of our pathway analysis, we can fetch out uh, where we uh, where we where we have, uh, have to optimize our lead. Uh, mean to say that our ligand and, uh, and our target at intra or at extracellular level. So after we, when we can uh, clear picture by pathway analysis, then we can go for the interaction level. Okay, and so yes, you mean there some many drugs? To... Yes, yes, there's yeah. a many drugs available for G coupled receptor as well. Yes, yes, yes. So because uh, uh, we are doing some uh, intracellular targeting and signaling pathways, so that's why I just asked you about that. And um, the, my target basically on G protein is uh, the GQ receptor. So that's why like we, we do the GQ targeting, we select the drug. Uh, it could be the, which is like maybe the natural compound, it could be the synthetic one, let's suppose aspirin. Uh, so like we target that GQ protein and the cyclooxygenase pathway and then the prostaglandins which are synthesized uh, by this uh, uh, cyclooxygenase pathway. So, uh, and also like a, another question I want to ask uh, related yes, to please. the vaccine, uh, is this Sinopharm, do you know the, the ligand which is interacting with Sinopharm? I mean, this is of course, it's a new question. I mean, a uh, new thing for everyone, but uh, maybe if you have any, uh, you want to add or something. Yes, I have already, uh, in Pakistan, I have already designed a vaccine concert that that's the third concert in Pakistan and which is uh, already acceptable for, uh, we can say that uh, NIH as well as WHO. Uh, that is, we can say that a mixture of uh, all of the uh, available drugs and we can say that the third and fourth level of uh, uh, the, we can say that uh, four attack of the SARS-CoV-2. So uh, mm -hmm. on the base of those analysis, uh, I am easily and can very clearly say that uh, yes, Sinopharm is not a bad one because Sinopharm is linked. We, we already uh, because most of you are available here from uh, we can say that uh, uh, South Asia, from Pakistan, from India, from Bangladesh, and we have uh, uh, we have this Sinopharm from China. So there are mm -hmm. many uh, many of my friends, which are, who are many of my friends as well, few of my teacher from Nust University, from Karen University, who are working uh, in China with Sinopharm. Uh, because with each mutation, they are going to modify the Sinopharm as well. But they are uh, asking us, as well as the all published constructs uh, in different kind of the articles, uh, how we can cope these mutation with Sinopharm or Sinovac or Pfizer or something else. Mm -hmm. So they are they are more, we, if, if you can ask me at the level of NIH or WHO, this team is the most active team right now that is working on the uh, super vaccine, which might cope at Delta level as well. Yes, Sinopharm, we can use Sinopharm uh, as a, a linker, as a, we can say that uh, as a component. Yeah, so people are modifying it later on. There will be modification in Sinopharm and Sinovac because uh, what we know is the traditional vaccine, it is just synthesized yes. like uh, by traditional way, killed virus. Killed so, virus. Uh, yeah. We can say that it it is we can we have to immunize that one in our body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the most important thing is that most of the students right mm -hmm. now, uh, like uh, mm -hmm. if you know the numbers, uh, there is about uh, vaccine construct. If we are only discussing about the vaccine construct, there's a mm -hmm. two thousand. 2,200 and around about 30 uh, articles are published on different kind of the constructs. 
so right now students are very worried we have designed a construct a vaccine construct and we have submitted to a general but general uh, straightforwardly refused that reason is that reason is that i told you that reason is that because there is a modification or verification in the sequence of a virus in the sequence of a yeah. receptor so uh, if I, I have a construct that is the third one in Pakistan, but when I have submitted to NIH, and NIH, NIH asked me that your construct is at what level? At delta virus level or secondary level, at tertiary level, blah, blah, blah. So that is very good question from their point of view. Might be our construct is modified. Uh, then we can say that uh, the SARS-CoV-2 level uh, uh, passed on from first level to second, then second to third, mm. and we move right to mm. year fourth. And one most important thing is that on the basis of simulation, on the basis of, mm -hmm. on the basis of artificial intelligence, this COVID-19 is not stopped into 2020 or 2013, uh, 2023. It may, might go at 2024 or 2025 because these drugs, when, when uh, I have read one or two uh, different kind of the uh, global disease burden articles that is based on these drugs, they are saying that, they are sellers saying that the most drugs are, are, uh, might be set at into 2025 or 2026. It means to say that mm -hmm. this COVID might proceed uh, toward 2025 and 2026. So for student, mm -hmm. for researcher, the uh, way forward is that you must have to check all of these mutation. And after if you get the mutation, you have to compare with that with, with that mutation with all kind of the construct. And all the construct are available at PubMed. You can easily fetch all yeah. the construct from PubMed. So you have to compare the uh, vaccine construct linker sequ sequence and uh, as well as the vaccine construct uh, sequence and as well as the protein might be some use the M protein, some using spike protein. You have to uh, yes. compare. One. Better thing is that you have to work on the comparison of these construct rather than you have to mm -hmm. go for the new construct. Yes, because the virus is any, any every time uh, mutation. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Navid. So we will move forward towards the our student audience and we'll see like uh, we, if anyone uh, yes i think there is there's Kumar, a question sir uh -huh. yes there uh, uh, mr um, what's his name mr umar shahzeb is there are uh, is there anyone from bioinformatics or this is not the one maybe the questions COVID vaccines like okay, so Miss Nida she is asking there are several COVID vaccines like Sinovac, Pfizer, Sinopharm, etc. So what is the main difference between them and which one is more effective? Okay, uh, first of all, we have to know about the difference between a drug and a vaccine. Vaccines are short way, short spell, short time to time. We use different kind of the vaccine. Uh, we can stop the, uh, we can say that uh, COVID-19 pandemics right now, right way by the use of different kind of vaccine. But drug is a last, last, last thing. Drug is, uh, we can say that a uh, long lasting and last lasting uh, way of treatment. So vaccine, if you can go for the comparison of different kind of the vaccine. So there is a many vaccine like Pfizer, like uh, Sinopharm, Sinovac. Sinopharm and Sinovac, these are, we can say that on the base of the, uh, our immune system. They, they, uh, they make our immune system you know, to give uh, and dose of a Sinovix. And then after that, if our, our immunity boost up and when and whenever a virus attack on our body, it can easily defend that one. If we can go, if we can go for these Pfizer, Pfizer, if we can say that's mRNA based virus, uh, mRNA, sorry, mRNA, mRNA based vaccine. So that vaccine is most effectful uh, in my, I have done the, Different universities, different kind of the talks that mostly people are very worried about the uh, about the Pfizer mRNA based viruses that might be the, become the part of our genome system. No, and not at all, not at all, not at all. Ye kabi bhi hamare system ka hissa nahi ban jati. Reason is that uh, <clears throat> that is based on mRNA. That mRNA can express in the form of protein, and that protein may can uh, uh, create an immunity in our body, and that immunity can easily tackle our uh, that virus. So this is the most appropriate, and we can say the more specific way of uh, treatment. So uh, if we, we can say that uh, uh, many of students are questioning that uh, if it, it, it's based on mRNA, it might be become the part of our genome. You have to familiar about that. When virus invade our body, it should not become the part of our body. It, it, it's in the form of a RNA virus. RNA must have to 
was transcribed in the uh, in, we can say that into a cdna and that cdna might be the part of our genome system then you use uh, external mrna of our body our enzyme easily can uh, find out that this is not 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 the natural mrna of our body because natural mrna comes from a dna so this mrna is not from that dna this mrna is present but have no back we can say that uh, on the background at uh, genome sequence or dna sequence so this uh, mrna only become uh, uh, synthesized in the form of protein and give an immunity over body so we use different kind of the vaccine have they have different threshold level uh, like uh, sinovac have their own uh, application sinovac has their own application but pfizer is the most uh, we, uh, according to my study you know, pfizer is the most applicable and most uh, we can say that reliable right now because it's based on the uh, we can say that mrna so that is the most specific one yes miss nadia uh miss nadia you there <laughs> okay miss i think mr vinay kumar is raising the hand okay uh, mr vinay kumar if you want can, to ask can you should, you should ask uh, okay i allow, can, uh, I allow the mic me? to uh, yes yes yeah. we can hear yeah. you yes so the second question is uh, from dr uh, Guls, uh, Gulzar, I think I'll check again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Dr. Faisal Gulzar, he's asking if we know the active ingredients in a plant extract, can we check their toxicity? Is there any software or tool? Yes, ToxM. Toxicm. You can use the uh, uh, any kind of ingredient. Mean to say that uh, if we if you are if we are saying that uh, a crowd extract or we can uh, talking about the uh, uh, any extract any any phytochemical any chemical any compound which you have to have, you have to take it from any source not from plant only you have to take it from bacteria you have to take it from soil you have to take it from uh, any vegetable any fruit uh, so we can check the toxicity level of that one at in silico level by toxicm tool toxicm tool give you a complete picture of uh, because it linked with the pathway as well so it give you and give you the uh, give you a picture of side effects of that chemical as well so uh, yes, you can check at in silico level by use of Topsian. Okay. The third question is: Is there any uh, from Mr. Said? Uh, is there any side effect if the second dose of vaccine late over one month? Is there any side effect? No. There's a no side effect of uh, vaccine, but uh, if you have not, uh, we can say that have a competition with virus. If you have infected with virus, then we can say that it's a side effect. But if you have delayed your uh, second vaccination, your second vaccination dose, there's a no uh, side effect of that one. You can easily uh, take your, uh, within a three to nine months, we can take uh, our second dose. Okay, so it's not compulsory that we should take after three weeks. No, no, not not three weeks because uh, uh, if uh, there's something else behind this behind behind we can say behind the story behind the picture there is a uh, government phase there is we can say that uh, uh, person to person immunity level there is a pandemic level there is a vaccine uh, nature as well yes they are recommended that we can take a dose within a one month but if you can go uh, say that uh, side effects of that one no there is no side effect on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's another question for, from our students. Sir, can you please tell which types of antibodies are activated after vaccination by our immune system? Okay, uh, if you have, we, we, uh, if we had to compare it with the different kind of the uh, antibiotics, then we use different kind of the antibiotics. Our body uh, T lymphocyte uh, activated on this on, on, on the first uh, on the first part. But for if we can go for the, uh, we can say that uh, Corona or COVID nineteen. So first of all, we can see that our T helper cell are activated by the production of different kind of the antibodies. So Sinovac and Sinopharm is based on that one. Okay. Um, 
from Dr. from Mr. Muhammad. If someone wants to check the interaction such as adsorption of protein on the surface of nanoparticles, is it possible to consider nanoparticle as a receptor and protein as a ligand? No. You have to make a, a very first question that might be from uh, Ms. Aruj. Uh, we have to make a conjugate of your, uh, your ligand candidate and your nanoparticle. But just like as a vaccine, we use a different kind of the linkers to make a uh, make our lichen. So for your uh, nanoparticle, you have to make a conjugate with your uh, with your ligand, and then that conjugate use as a ligand as a lead for your target. And for if uh, for that one, if your nano you are using the nanoparticle and you want to check the absorb absorption level, you have to go for the admin analysis. Okay. But in the form of a conjugate. Okay, so uh, there from uh, Ms. Ruba, there is a rumor that people are getting side effects after getting COVID vaccination, and moreover, their lifespan becomes shortened as compared to unvaccinated person. Is it true according to uh, literature? Uh, according to literature, as well as according to right now in live examples, there's a no right, no clue, li uh, clue about this one that uh, our lifespan is uh, uh, only about one year or two years or three years. There's only a rumor. I have already shared a lecture uh, on uh, this one. Ke vaccine laga ke aapne corona se ladna hai, darna nahi hai. So that lecture is truly solely based upon this one and all of I already shared uh, in that lecture uh, all of the newses, all of the fake newses, all of the rumors, and I have uh, acknowledged that the rumors with the justification of different kind of the literature. Though there's uh, nothing, anything right now in our body, in our system, that our life become threatened by the use of any kind of the vaccine. And if you are the student of, we can say that biology or biochemistry, or, uh, or you are the student of bio biology, so you can easily see that there is a different pathway for the vaccine and immunity, and there's a different pathway we can say that uh, for death causing cells. So there is no linkage between these two. The next question. Okay, so uh, next question is uh, from. Uh, for from Dr. Abdul Hafiz for antimicrobial peptide prediction, would you like to suggest tools for prediction, amino acid composition, descriptor calculation? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for, uh, if, we, if if you are going to use the, these tools, which is the present on my slides, so uh, you can easily fetch over at the level of uh, uh, we can say that. Uh, Admit level uh, at admit analysis. If you are using that peptide that's extracted from the microbe, you use uh, you, uh, you are using as a candidate for drug. So you can at the level of admin, you can check all the physiochemical analysis of this one. Other tools are also available, like PSI PRET is available on my channel. You can easily check out the uh, two or three different kind of the lecture are available on physiochemical properties of uh, the peptide or the synthesized protein or any kind of the protein. Yes, we can check the physiochemical property of uh, uh, that protein, and those tools working uh, worked in. We can say that within a few minutes, you can get the analysis. I will share you right now. Uh, we have a emboss. If you can write down, <coughs> emboss pepstat protein physiochemical uh, calculation. Uh, emboss pepstat freely available tool, and its work uh, give you a result in within a three to four minutes. And I have shared lecture uh, on my channel uh, as lecture number, I think so, 46. I will share you right now, just a minute. This is lecture number 44 in bioinformatics series, Embos Pepstat. So you can use Embos Pepstat uh, for the uh, peptide, or we can say that uh, synthesized peptide, or we can say that uh, any kind of the protein physiochemical characterization. Yes, miss. <clears throat> okay, so another question we have from uh, Mr. Suhail. If you have first dose only, you can be vaccinated by other vaccine. Maybe he's asking, wants to ask, you can use a second, another uh, vaccine, maybe like one Sinopharm, next Pfizer or Sinovac. So you have to wait for three months. 
if you mm -hmm. have done with the uh, first time vaccination dose about uh, Sinovac, and then you have to go for the Pfizer, because most of the time we have to make, uh, we have to move from uh, out of the country, and most the country are restricted with Sinovac and Sinopharm. Yes, uh, for that one you have to uh, wait for three months, at least three months. After three months you have to take the uh, first dose of uh, uh, Pfizer or any other uh, we can say the other vaccine. So you have to complete that course as well. If you have two doses, you have to complete two doses. If you have one dose, then you have to go for the one dose. But you have to wait for three months. Okay, so uh, next question from Mr. Muhammad. How can we make construct of nanoparticle of protein? Because in protein adsorption study, we want to attach protein on the surface, not in the ligand of protein. Okay, the most of the students right now are working with the conjugates of uh, different kind of the nanoparticle with the, your protein. Uh, but uh, right now, for nanoinformatics level, the most study which I have right, which I have studied right now, that's based on the ligand and nanoparticle conjugate. There's a very rare studies about the uh, protein and nanoparticle adsorption, or we can say that they're conjugate. But yes, we can try it, try it out if we, our pathway analysis is not disturbed, if our protein interaction analysis is not disturbed, because if we are discussing or if we can make a protein as a candidate protein on an active site, and that active site might interact with that nanoparticle, if that nanoparticle interact, interact with that uh, protein, then might be our ligand, our lead not interacted in that way, in that fashion, that without that nanoparticle. So here we can have some studies where we can say that there's a hindrance uh, if we can go uh, to interact our nanoparticle with directly with our target. But we can use this one if we can get good result at interaction level or simulation level, and then admit analysis can uh, check it out, check it out. So then we can uh, use this one as well. But right now there's a very few, very few uh, articles I can say that our videos, our lectures are available on this one because if we can go uh, and uh, think about that one, that's uh, some something we can say that is uh, tricky. But in such that yes, we can do this one. Okay, uh, then from Mr. Asif, Parkvac has a as a vector-based vaccine. Parkvac is a vector-based vaccine. Vaccine in a single dose more than. 4 into 10 to power uh, resolution to power 9 ad adenovirus were injected to human body. As the virus, does the virus replicate in human body or not? No. Virus uh, replication, I already tell, told you about that mRNA viruses as well as the virus as uh, virus as being in, uh, we can say that RNA based viruses as well. These RNA based viruses are present in our body and then they go for the reverse transcription, then become the cDNA, and then if the, uh, the virus titer, already uh, he told that about adenovirus, adenovirus titer, if this titer is increasing, it means that virus in our body is replicating. Somehow it's possible in our body to replicate this one, but this is, we can say that uh, this is not, we removed the protein of that virus, the viruses will not use, we can say that uh, active one that can make uh, those mRNA and those mRNA can produce this one. If we can uh, discuss about the MR level, yes, then possible. But if we can say that uh, we use adenovirus as it is, that's, that's not possible. So if we uh, use like the Parkvac, it's a vector-based vaccine, but you are, uh, one thing most important, that is, we can say that it's a formula that is similar formula, similar concept of Sinovac and Sinovac. So we have uh, China based because all of this center from China and here in Pakistan at NIH uh, Islamabad, we have to dwell, we have developed the Sino Park. Uh, different trials are right now going on, but right now uh, they are admi administrated uh, before three or two or three months before. But this is not uh, right now. This is not administrated to anyone because there has some side effect as well. Okay. Mm. So I think this is the end of our questions uh, section. Uh, there is one question from Mr. Naya. In silico study, how and which type of software are used to check that our plasmid vector is transferred or not into any uh, any organism? Okay, uh, I will tell you about the name of the lecture. Just a minute. 
Let it load on my channel. Okay, yes. Uh, we have a lecture from uh, 17, 18, and 19. Striction enzyme digestion, striction and insertion cloning, uh, gene cloning and vector, and then expression vector. Yes, by the use of these, uh, like we can say that expression vector, uh, we can also use in silico recombinant protein as a vector. Uh, and we can uh, uh, use this one uh, for the expression study as well. Uh, on, we can say that at the in silico level, yes, you can check out the expression of your vector uh, by the use of uh, expression vector studies. And this is lecture number, uh, exact lecture number is 19. So you can use, uh, uh, you can uh, search out this lecture and this will give you the clear picture of uh, uh, how we can uh, make our uh, uh, recombinant or we can say that uh, any vector is transformed or not transformed. And the tool used for this one is the vector builder. Okay, so I think this is the end of uh, questions. Now we do not have uh, further questions. So uh, I would like to thank Dr. Muhammad on behalf of uh, World Forum for Young Scientists Group. Uh, just one, yes. So the students and researchers and uh, the doctors who have attended the lecture today reminded that uh, uh, the World Forum of Young Scientists is has organized uh, uh, the webinar for uh, our young scholars and the major purpose and objective of our uh, group is to bring together the global scientific community including the young scholars and the doctors and as well as researchers on one platform and to work hand in hand for the solution of the global problems and for the betterment of societies and mankind beyond their geographical borders. This group, World Forum for Young Scientists, is a source of latest information, knowledge, and awareness about science and its importance among the general public in different regions of the world, development of research culture in societies worldwide, and creating new opportunities for young scholars and researchers. It also facilitates and educates scholars and researchers against different issues and obstacles that they experience during his or her career. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank you very much for everyone for listening and for your patience. And if you have any kind of a question, you can uh, contact via this World Forum uh, Scientist as well as from my uh, YouTube channel. Thank you very much from my side. Uh, I have already, uh, I have already because everyone is asking for your YouTube link. So I have uh, already shared the link in the chat box. So every, uh, anyone who want to uh, visit your channel, they, uh, he or she can easily visit your channel and uh, take advantage of your uh, informative lecture. And I must say, I also um, learned a lot from your lectures. Uh, and thank so, you so much for the lectures. Thank you so much. Most welcome, most, anytime. Most uh, welcome okay. to everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. There is time to sign out. Everyone, thank you so much. Uh, we will, inshallah, uh, organize another uh, seminar, uh, webinar for your uh, for your information, for your uh, making, building the scientific bridge. So wait for the next uh, topic. Uh, till then, Allah Hafiz. Good night. Okay. Allah Hafiz. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.